A discovery of rare photographs taken in Korea during the late 19th and early 20th century has revealed never-before-seen images of key figures in Korea's history. Our Im Yoon Hee joins us today with more on this interesting story. Good afternoon, Yoon Hee. Good afternoon. Right. So late last year, a huge collection of these photographs taken of uh, modern Korea were discovered at Rutgers University in New Jersey, more specifically at the William Elliott Griffiths Collection. Now, of the 592 photographs discovered, hundreds of these photographs have never been seen before by the public. Take a look at some of them. The fifth son of Korea's Emperor Kwangmu, Prince Yi Kang, lived during a tumultuous time in Korean history, during the First Sino-Japanese War. This recently discovered shot is one of the earliest pictures of the prince, taken in 1899 when he left to study abroad in the United States. Another photograph is of Hungsun Daewon-gun, known to some Westerners as Prince Kung. He served as regent of the Joseon dynasty while King Kojong was a minor during the 1860s. The picture on the right, believed to be him in his 40s, shows a much younger version of him. Seo Jae-pil, also known as Philip Jason, was a leader in Korea's fight for independence, even putting together the doomed Kapshin coup to oust the Joseon era leadership. He was the first Korean to receive U.S. citizenship, and this new picture on the left shows a young 23-year-old Seo, taken in 1887. Another leader of the failed Kapshin coup was Park Young Hyo. This rare image of the Korean politician at 25 before his involvement with the enlightened movement of Korea. And lastly, Kim Ok Kyun, a reformist during the late Joseon dynasty. The image on the left shows him at 35 years old, and though there are many black and white photos of him, this is the first known color photograph of Kim. And while these pictures reveal a small piece of Korea's history, musician Hwang byung holds on to history in his own way. For decades, he's been a master of the popular kayagum, one of Korea's most played traditional Korean instruments. And now, a new book about Hwang, compiled by English scholar Andrew Kilik over 25 years, has recently been published in Korean. So the book, of course, was originally written in uh, English, but now mm -hmm. there's a published uh, version Korean version published uh, right, recently. Right, right. So Hwang byung is a very important, not only composer, but a musician as well. And uh, now this book was, uh, like she said, first published in English, uh, but because of its importance, it was translated into Korean and republished uh, recently. Now, for those who are not familiar, he, the kayagum, which is a 12-string uh, zither instrument, the more traditional Korean instrument played here, one of the more popular instruments, and that's right. one of the instruments he's seen playing. Uh, but the history of the instrument dates back to the 6th century, and it's very important for us uh, here in Korea and for the culture as well. So a very important musician. Right. So there are many ways to remember the history, and of mm -hmm. course, photographs, uh, those were very interesting as well. Right, right. So of the tons and tons of photos, hundreds of photos that were found. There were also photographs found of the Empress Myeongsung, also known as Queen Min. Now, people, many people don't know, but she was originally buried at a separate location and later moved, but pictures of this original location, her original burial, were also discovered, and these images had never been seen before, so that was a very big find. People were very excited about that. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, Ayuni, for bringing us this story today. You're very welcome. Mm -hmm.